Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about how we go about testing for the presence of serial correlation in our error terms. Okay, so why is it important first of all to test for serial correlation? Well, we covered that in previous videos. It means that least squared estimators are no longer blue. In specific, there are other linear unbiased estimators which are better than least squares. So what do we mean by serial correlation of errors? Well, the idea is that there is some sort of population and within that population, there is some sort of population process. So we've got yt being given by alpha plus beta xt plus our errors, et. And the idea with serially correlated errors is that there is some sort of relationship between our errors. So one particular relationship which we're going to sort of use here is if our errors follow an AR1 process. Don't worry if you don't understand what an AR1 process is. We're going to cover that in future videos. I just sort of wanted to, men wanted to mention it here just for completeness. Okay, so we have serial correlation if our sort of coefficient rho doesn't equal zero in the population. Okay, so that sort of specified our population process. How do we go about testing for the presence of serial correlation given that we don't actually observe these errors? Well, a sort of first stab might be actually to do exactly the same thing as we did when we were testing for heteroscedasticity. So if we have our sort of regression equation, yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt plus et, if we then use our sort of least squares estimates of alpha and beta, then we get an estimate of our errors, which we call residuals, which I sort of note here by putting et hat. And then what we might do is we might actually try and estimate this second population equation here, but replacing our errors in our population with our residuals. So our actual second regression here is in fact, if I regress et hat on let's say a constant plus delta one times et minus one hat, say I'm regressing my residuals at period t on my residuals at period t minus one, so the idea is that if I test for significance of delta 1 in my regression equation using some sort of t statistic, then essentially what we're doing is we're testing for whether rho is actually different from naught in the population. So I've alluded to how we might do this. We construct a t statistic, which is just equal to our sort of least squared estimate of delta 1 in this second regression equation. And then we divide that by the estimated standard error in delta 1, which we get from these squares. And the idea here is that if our sort of absolute magnitude of t is greater than the critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis. Well, just being concrete, what do we mean by the null hypothesis here? The null hypothesis here is that rho equals naught in the population. And the alternative hypothesis is that rho does not equal naught. So the null hypothesis here means that we have no serial correlation, and the alternative means that we have serial correlation. So if our value of our t is greater than the critical value, that means that we find that delta 1 is significant, or there is some sort of evidence that there is some sort of error structure, because it turns out that actually replacing our population errors by our sample equivalents actually turns out to be quite a good thing under a whole sort of range of assumptions. So if t is, or the magnitude of t is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis of no serial correlation. If our magnitude of t is less than the critical value, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. So this is one particular test of testing for serial correlation in our errors. There is one potential problem which I should sort of note with this test, and that is if we have endogenous regressors, so there is some sort of relationship between xt and et, or rather I should sort of say relationship between xt and et in the population, then it turns out that the way in which we've specified this t-test by this auxiliary regression isn't valid. We need to slightly change this specification to take into account the fact that we have endogenous regressors. So that's one potential problem. Another, not so much a problem, but something we need to take care of is the fact that we're dividing through our delta 1, our estimate of delta 1, by the standard error in delta 1. And normally when you use sort of standard software packages to do this, those packages will assume that you have homoscedastic errors. If you have heteroscedastic errors, then you need to correct your T statistic to take this into account. So all is not lost, we can actually still gather something which is important and we can still test the presence of serial correlation in the presence of heteroscedastic errors, but we do need to use some sort of robust form of our t-statistic. 
In the next video, we're going to talk about another way in which we can test for the presence of COD correlated errors, and that is using the Devon Watson statistic. I'll see you then.